Hi everybody, how is it going today? So, hey guys, we're gonna take a look at basic risk management, okay? Don't be naughty with your money and let the risk be risque. Without good management, all you'll cause are the damages. Wondering in bafflement, where'd my money go? Why is it sitting on the battlefront? You'll deposit more, where'd it all go again? I'd call that abandonment. Now, I gotta be very adamant, give you guys a bit of encouragement. You wanna play conservative, don't ever play extravagant. Otherwise, you'll learn quick about the word famishment. If you're gonna play risky, think first and exercise abstinence or else you'll be in lots of pain. Somebody call the ambulance. Now that you guys have a very clear stance on risk management and how I feel about it, you guys know very well that I think that if you guys don't mismanage your risk really well, you guys are gonna lose all your money and you guys don't want to do that. And it's a very basic principle that I think everybody should learn. And if you don't know about risk management already, and you've only been trading for a very short period of time, what I can guarantee with 100% certainty is that you will lose all of your money eventually over time. Because if you don't know how to control your money and manage it properly, then how the heck can you retain that money as well, right? Your, your um, streak of luck will run out inevitably, guys. If you guys have been only trading for a few short months and you guys have been winning a little bit, I assure you that the luck will run out, okay? It will absolutely run out if you don't have any risk management plan. So what I would like to talk about today is a very basic risk management plan and a, and a slight way to ladder your buys so you can average out prices. So let's first of all talk about what risk management is, okay? Risk management is a way of managing your money where you will, where you will uh, factor in your possible gains versus your possible losses. So you can make a decision on if this is a good possible reward setup or not. And if you guys have noticed from the, the trades that I do call with risk to reward setups, well, you're getting a risk to reward setup of, you know, anywhere between two to nine, right? So I'm taking very, very low risk, high reward setups that I recommend to you guys. And now the lower the risk to reward number, the riskier it is. What you would want is a really high risk to reward number. So let's go over some basic examples that I've written out for you guys already. Okay, so let's just say you're going to the casino every day, which I don't recommend, okay? Stock market, it's a lot better. If you guys wanna gamble, stick to the stock market, okay? It's, you know, it's, it's pretty addictive, I have to admit. I think I'm pretty addicted to gambling in general, and I have a pretty bad addiction to the stock market, especially cryptocurrency. I tried to take a break a few days ago, and wow, like I was, I was ready to hurt Luna. I, I was really ready to hurt Luna. I was like, Luna, somebody give me a stock market right now. I need to trade something. And she's like, no, no, Philicon, you got, you got to stop trading. And I was like, Luna, just a little bit. Just give me a little bit, and I'll be happy. Just let me make one trade. Just, just a thousand dollars. And she's like, no, Philicon, you said you weren't gonna trade or post any charts for a week. And, and I got so upset, guys, I pushed it out of the way, you know, and I started posting and tweeting again. So, so what I'm getting to is like, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's quite an addiction trading, but it's okay. We can, we can manage our, our addictions, you know, we can manage our, our, our problems if we have a gambling problem. Not to say that it's, it's not, you know, a major issue, but what I'm trying to make clear is that we are gambling. Okay, guys, this whole little soliloquy, what I'm trying to say is that, that gambling and going to the casino or playing the stock market, it is all gambling, no matter what anybody says, okay? But the thing about the stock market is, yes, it's addictive, yes, it's a form of gambling, but we can manage our risk a lot better than going to the casino where the probabilities are stacked against us, right? At the casino, and trust me guys, I know, I study this a lot in, in classes in university for my math major, the, the odds are very stacked against you at the casino, especially if you're playing the slot machine, right? but I'm gonna use um, a casino example because it makes the most sense, right? And the thing about trading is that we try to find really good risk to reward setups and we try to find them because it gives us a chance to um, control the amount of money that we can win or lose, okay guys? So that is what we're gonna do today. Luna, that's right, I'm talking to you. Yeah, that's right, we're gonna talk about risk management today. Give me a howl, give me a howl for all the viewers. Three, two, one. Oh, oh. 
we all like to hear your long ones. That's a pretty good one. Can you give the viewers one more howl? Wait for my cow. Wait for my cow. Three. You're early. You keep being early, Luna. Three, two, one. That's a really good one. Okay, we're going to talk about risk management. Give everybody some encouragement. There you go. That's some encouraging words. So even even my dog, like she wants you guys to succeed, okay? So you guys have to listen to Luna. Luna knows a lot about trading, okay? She has taught me everything I know to date about trading. She's the smartest dog I've ever met in my life before. She has a PhD in, in, um, in astrophysics and also the stock market. So this is all words from Luna. So make sure you guys take it with a grain of salt and also always formulate your own opinions and look for information from various sources, right? The more we look, the more we search, the more we learn, the more we grow. So, okay, okay guys, let's talk about going to the casino every day. So every day you go to the casino, you have a chance to win $150 and you have a chance to lose $100 for that day only. Now think of it as a trade as well, right? Think of one day at the casino as one trade, we can say. So you have a chance to win $150 and you have a chance to lose $100. As soon as you lose $100, you call it quits and you go home. And that is it. You don't play more than that. This would be called a risk to reward ratio of 1.5 to 1 also known as 1.5, okay? Because we can win 1.5 times more than we can lose. We get this number by dividing the maximum amount we can win by the maximum amount we can lose. So that's $150 divided by $100 is equal to 1.5, right? Which means we can win 1.5 times more than we can lose. So we call this 1.5 to 1. This colon is just called 2, okay? Like, you know, TO, 1.5 to 1, risk to reward ratio. It's commonly written as R colon R, known as risk to reward. And you will also see it often written like 1.5 to 1, comma, R to R, right? 1.5 to 1 RR. So that's how it's defined in terms of how it's written and how people talk about it. So whenever you guys see me tweet about 1.5 to 1 RR, etc., you can definitely count on, on it like this, okay? So it's the ratio of what you can win divided by the ratio of what you can lose. Next part, I don't believe in PowerPoints, I believe in charts. So let's say we go to the casino every day with a risk to reward of 1.5 to 1. It can apply to any ratio. So in my example, if you can win 150, then you can lose 100. In another example, if you win, if you can win 1,500, then you can lose $1,000, which all means the same thing. Risk to reward of 1.5 to 1, okay? So each day, so each day we can win $150, or you can lose $100. And we ask ourselves, is it worth it going to the casino if we can win this exact amount every day or we can lose this amount, exact amount as well every day? So let's think about it. Each day we can win 150 and also each day we can lose $100. Let's just assume a 50-50% chance, okay? But the thing about trading is that it can be much higher than 50-50, right? In terms of how you can win because we've got technical indicators. When we when we factor in technical indicators, when we factor in um, just overall indicators and candles and just strategy and patterns, etc., it's going to be much higher than 50% depending on your skill level. But I'm just using a 50-50, assuming that there's a split even chance, all right? So we take this scenario here. Let's go to the casino now for 10 days. Let's go to the casino for 10 days in a row. And out of 10 days with a risk to reward of 1.5 to 1, and you win 50% of the time and you lost 50% of the time. Each win is $150 and each loss is $100. And we'll just alternate the days, okay? We'll alternate the days. So day one, we win 150. Day two, we lose 150. Day three, 
we win 150. Day four, we lose 100. Or sorry, day one, 150. Day two, we lose 100. Day three, we win 150. Day four, we lose 100. Day five, we win 150. Day six, we lose 100. Day seven, we win 150. Day eight, we lose 100. Day nine, we win 150. And day 10, we, we lose 100. Now that's 50-50, okay? Just 50-50. Make sense so far? So win days are 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, obviously, because it's 50, 50, which is 5 win days. So lost days would be equal to day 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, which is also 5 lost days, right? So now that's down 5 out of 5, 5 wins, 5 losses. Well, 5 wins at $150 each is $750. But 5 losses at $100 is equal to $500. So your total profit is equal to $750 minus $500, which is equal to a profit at the end of the 10 days of $250, right? So if you keep taking a risk to reward setup that's fairly high, over time, you will win no matter what, guys. And that is why I always try to tell people that the one trade does not matter if you lose. On that one day, you know, let's say days two, four, six, and eight, you lose, and 10, 50-50, it doesn't make up for the days that you won in terms of losses, okay? The days that you have won, they will entirely make up for the days that you have lost. So as a trader, as a trader who does this full-time, what I focus on is making sure I win over time. And I don't care at all about the one loss, for example, like the Neo one, right? Well, it wasn't even a loss. I just joined in with you guys at $37 because I knew that you guys were also in it in a long position from $37. I knew it was, wasn't probably going to hit it. So I cut my losses. I cut 63.30 and I took like a $100, $150 loss, right? Just to show you guys an example that was leading up to today. And it's so it's also to show by, by, by leading by example, right? That yeah, I took a small loss. Honestly, it was a small loss on purpose that I took. I knew it wasn't going to hit back to it, but later today it hit back to it, right? But it hit my stop loss. It hit my stop loss, so I, you know, or it hit a plateau that I thought it wouldn't break. So I took a loss, guys. And when I think of the loss, does it make up for the like this amount that I lose, 100, 150? Does it is it really significant when I compare it to all of the trades that you guys have seen me tweet about? In fact, we're talking about ETP today, right guys? ETP has gone up by 20%, guys, or 17% in less than 24 hours from I tweeted it. So sure, people might have lost a little bit on NEO, but you guys look at all the wins over time. Not just mine, but you look at yours, right? And that's what you should focus on. You should not focus your energy or your emotions on one small losing trade because if you keep that mentality up it's not going to make you a successful trader a successful trader will always win over time by managing their risk okay so um what is this right here okay i'll be right back i got to get my new screen up all right now that we have the basics established what i want to go over let me just have a sip of water here Ah, okay. So now that I have the basic risk to reward definition up, we want to know what this is. I bet you guys, a lot of you guys are probably wondering what the heck is this that we see on Philicon's charts, okay? We always see this, but what is it? And that is what I would love to go over. I also want to check ETP, guys. I called this yesterday. I suggested an entry price under 325 under 325 so right around here say right around here and it has gone up by 18 percent guys because i always take the trades that i share with you guys 100 percent i take the trade but i don't take the trade before i make the video because I've got some pretty strong um ethics you can say and i have some strong values in terms of fair play in the market and I know for a fact that the price is going to go up. That's why I'm making the video. But at the same time, I refuse to buy before I make the video because I also want everybody to get in on the same chance. So when I post the video, that is when I will start accumulating just for fair play. And these spikes that you guys see, 
are most likely because of me, because I make the video, and I will buy, and I will accumulate, and I will slowly drive up the price myself, just to give people watching the charts there. So this little green spike candle right here, around 3 in the morning, guys, that's me. <laughs> I wanted to... So when it, when, if it's a low market cap coin, or not a low market cap, but a low 24-hour volume coin, I will, I will give the market a signal sometimes if I'm entering a large position. And these signals right here come in the form of a candle just to let people know that something is going on. <laughs> so yeah, so what I'm saying is I will absolutely buy the coin myself, but only after the video is released. So it's just to make sure it's fair play for everybody, right? I don't want to be the one with all the information and then I just hog it to myself, right? That's why I share these charts with you guys as well. So let's take a look at some of my charts. Be not, not, we're not going to talk about entries and stuff. We're just going to take a look at why I always have this, right? This green, red thing, right? I've got it everywhere. I got it in every single one, right? It talks about the percentage to gain. It talks about right here as well, the, the risk to reward ratio. And it talks about the percentage right here. So if you guys look, right, this is your percentage to gain. This is your, your uh, risk to reward ratio. And this one right here is your profit loss percentage, right? You see in every single one of my chart of mine, and I also write all of these details as well, the risk to reward, the entry price, the target price, chance to gain, probability, and stop loss. So every single one of my charts, guys, hey, this is the best, by the way, check this out right here. Colgate Wave Zigzag. That's how much I love Elliott Waves. Elliott Wave is the best thing in the world. Oh my god, I was at my parents a few weeks ago and I had this gigantic bowl of fur. Oh, I'm so hungry right now, guys. It's already 3 o'clock and I haven't had anything to eat yet. I gotta order some food after this video. Gotta eat so bad. My dog is pretty tempting to eat right now, but she's pretty skinny. She's only like six pounds. Don't look at me like that, Luna. You know I'll eat you, and you know our kind. We love to eat you. I'll be right back, guys. She's giving me a dirty look. Okay, I'm back. That, that was only like a few seconds to you guys, but um, it was much longer. Than, I had to go chase her around the house. She's uh. She, 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 she needs to understand that she's only here for one reason, and that's to be for Thanksgiving next year, okay? Anyways, so... We're going to talk about how the pro how risk to reward is calculated, okay? So we're going to take a look at some stuff here. I'm just going to write it down. So what you guys notice here, it says the risk to reward is 1.5, right? The entry price is right here, profit level ticks. Sorry, sorry that, that's your target price right there. 3.6, you can see it here, 3.67. If you double click on here, you can also see it here, 3.607. You can use this is your entry price, and this is your stop loss, okay? And that all those numbers I also wrote here as well. So <clears throat> what this means is in the middle line, right here, where the red and the green meet, that right there is your price that you will enter a position. Okay, and that price right there happened to be 305. Sorry, 3.5. Now the top part is where your target is. That is the part where you are targeting based on doing your technical analysis where you think it will reach, okay? So everything that is in the green zone, everything that's in the green zone, let's say I moved it over to over here, okay? See, notice, you guys notice right here that the green gets highlighted, right? It gets highlighted extra. Everything in the green zone, like if I go from here, for example, you guys will notice, look, look really closely. You notice the shade of green change color, right? For example, right there. Everything there is your profit. That is the profit ticker. I want to change this back to 3.5. So, yeah, let's go right here. So, as an example, 3.5. This is down ticking pretty hard right now. Hold on, I got to do analysis right here in front of you guys. Just want to see what FIB level it's at. Mm, do I want to enter a position yet? Is it leveling off? Yeah, it is. How many Elliott waves do you guys count? Let's take a look together. I count one. Whoa, that's a really hard count. Super hard count. I found, think we found some support. I'll be right back. I'm going to buy. 
Okay, I apparently entered a short position right here. I got a level, I don't know, I can play with 4600. I have no idea that I entered a short position. Um, okay, I guess I'll short, close my short position right here in front of you guys. I'm on Neil right now. I don't want to be on Neil. I want to be on ETP, close my short position, and then go into a long position. Okay. Oh, I could have closed it way earlier as well. I'll just close it right now. Come on. Jeez, I didn't, get the, I didn't get the best profit. It's okay though, we found some support. I'm gonna buy, how much guys, a thousand? Nah, let's just buy 500. I just wanna keep myself uh, in the game while I trade with you guys here, all right? Nine, two. Whatever, I'll buy more, I don't mind at that price. Okay, I entered a small position, 1500 bucks. I'm just gonna set a stop here in front of you guys, don't mind me. Quick gains that will pay for my lunch today. Especially while I'm making a video, okay? Especially while I'm making a video, it doesn't seem like much, right? But two cents, three cents spread on 15, still $15. I don't got time to pause the video all the time, so I might be taking a few small, tiny little trades in front of you guys. I hope that's cool. So I've got like zero feeds, right? Because I place limit orders. So what I always do is I place small amounts. Like this one's tiny, right? To me, it's $1,500 only. But just, I don't know, I'll make live trades here and there whenever I feel like it. During, a, during the middle of a video, at least I will, right? So because like, you know, it seems tiny for a lot of people, right? But it's just to show an example that when you make many small trades, they can really add up. No one wants to sell right now. If you guys notice, no one wants to sell at all. I'm just waiting for it to tick. So this is what I do. Have you, have you guys noticed I'm not even looking at the candles right now? Right? I'm sure you guys have probably noticed that. I'm not really looking at the candles right now. So when you enter a position, see now it's loosening up. These guys are spreading out their bids a little bit. Then it's, it wasn't really stacked up as much before. And what I do is I look on the order book right here, okay? I always keep an eye on this order book. This is called the level two. This whole area, the order book and the trades, that's called the level two screen. This side here is the people that are bidding on, on coins. This side here is the ask. I know I'm getting a little sidetracked right now. I regret entering this position. So, and I, I don't really look at the candles too much, like during a volatility like this, but you know, if, if we just take a look right here, this is getting ready for a breakout. If you guys notice, okay, we're finally getting a higher high than it. And I think that the wave count is also done. This is getting fairly symmetrical like that. It's getting to a pretty low RSI that's finding a base support right now. So I, I absolutely see it just peaking. I don't think it's going to sell up there actually, but it's, it's just hovering between here and here and eventually it's going to break out ETP. See, it's finding baseline support right here. It's getting higher, higher, higher on the RSI, if you guys notice, right? Just like that. And if you guys also draw your resistance line right here, what do you guys notice about this? Look at this closely. What do you guys notice about it, okay? This particular line right here, it's definitely going to challenge it, and we're getting more strength on the bottom side, right? Look, on the RSI, so you draw a support like that, and it's being wedged to go up right now. Some people might argue and say, yeah, it's going down, actually. It's going down, sure. But if it was going down, we wouldn't get this series of higher highs here. So here we got our series of lower lows on the RSI, right? Here we're getting our series of lower lows on the RSI, and it came down in a nice channel. Do you guys see this channel in the RSI? Which also coincides with this channel right here as well. So when I look at the RSI, it broke out of the channel for the RSI. And the channel, this resistance right here on the RSI, it actually now becomes a support resistance, okay? And now we're challenging this just like that. It's going to squeeze into here and then break up to the upside in just a few minutes. Um, it's probably going to do it around 3.30, like in 30 minutes or so, okay? 
So that's how we know that it channels came down here like that. I'm going to keep giving you guys lessons day in, day out, no matter what. Even if it's in the middle of a topic, I'm going to break up, break out into tangents when I see something going on with one of my small trades. What I'll usually do, guys, believe it or not, that's it. I keep five to $10,000 in my margin account, okay? And I play that, and I will make some ridiculous gains a day. Like, there are honestly some days where I could be making myself... Um, I don't know, fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars, just playing on a small five to ten thousand dollar account, and you know sometimes it's less. Sometimes I'll make two hundred dollars a day. Sometimes I'll make five hundred, but the profits are always really consistent. And then like this is from I'm talking, I'm talking about for my scalping positions, okay? For my longer term positions, I'll play much bigger. But you guys would be blown away by how much you can make in such a short period of time. So once again, I'm going to go over this channel with you guys since I see it as a good learning opportunity. This RSI is coming down, right? RSI is coming down into a beautiful channel. This is clearly the resistance up there, and this is the support right here, right? And then it breaks out of the channel, and now this one right here, one, two, three bottoms, it acts as its support. And then what was formerly the resistance, it also acts as a support now as well. That's what we literally bounce right off of it right here. So this point, wherever it was, it was a really good point for people to enter a position. Right there, or even right down here. Down right here. On this bounce there. Let's see where that coincides on the map. Okay, so this zone right here, right? You guys see this zone right there is a really good, um, good time to be entering a trade. I was making the video when I was, um, so I, I wasn't really looking on the five minute chart, right? But that's how I get a lot of my signals. And you guys will see as well that it's going to break up to the upside. And you guys are going to see my profit for a small $1,000 or 1500 whatever position size that is, $2,000. So, yeah. So we finished basically our five waves here coming down. That's what I think. I don't really know how to count it well. One, two, three, four, five here. It's two, and then one, two, three, four, five, three, and four, and then super tiny one right there. So yeah, I do count five Elliott waves here already. One, two, three, four, five. We'll start up here, here, two, one, two, three, four, five, four, and yeah, that's it right there, guys. We count five Elliott waves coming down. There's no arguing that. So this is wave A, right? All of this, if you guys know, if this is wave A, that's wave one, right? That's wave one right there. And now we need to make an ABC type correction. A, B, and C. So I caught it right on the bounce there. See, notice how I'm upticking already and I'm positive, guys. So I'm going to move my limit order up because I do expect a decent retracement, okay? I expect a pretty decent retracement. And then C will probably come down to the 0 0.618 Fibonacci level. So this might seem small to you guys, right? But I just, it was a small one that I will also want to let you see. And I'm going to take my Fibonacci tool here. So my target box is actually 618 Fibonacci, we'll say. So that's really my target box right there. Right around here, guys. Cool, right? Cool. So I'm gonna, whenever we see a one, two, three, four, five correction like that, okay? This is wave one, and this is going to wave two down here like that. Wave two, there's always an A, B, C correction. Now we don't know if it's exactly gonna get down there, but what we do know is that it could be anywhere from a double bottom to over here. If there's a lot of strength and it's bullish, it could even be higher. So I'm upticking already there, if you guys have noticed. I don't really wanna make this video um, in between here, so I'm actually just gonna take my profit, which I'm, which I'm cool with. $5, guys, I just made this video and I literally bought myself a lunch. So let's take a look at it on the five minute chart or the one minute chart rather. So notice we're getting a lower low here. It's just a matter of time until people start buying and it goes up because nobody wants to sell. I sold 26 already and that's not the actual profit, keep in mind, okay? 
the profit is um based on this this side right there if i were to do a market execution so i, I would actually and that would be for the maker fee right and that would be for a maker fee factors in the maximum loss but because i put a limit up and because i trade a fairly substantial amount every month my taker fee sorry my this would be on the taker fee but on the maker fee right there mine would actually be um zero so see people are buying so it actually reflects my real profit now see so i'm not really making four dollars i'm making way more than that so there you go i just made 10 something dollars it was a two and a half cent position right two and a half cent do you guys know what i mean difference in the price well if you guys take the amount right i had 500 coins and i have literally zero fee is 0 0.025 and i times that by 500 i just made you know 12 dollars on my trade right there so that that's how easy it is to make money and that was just a tiny tiny example you know i could have bought myself like a thousand coins if i wanted to to play like a three thousand dollar position in my margin account, I actually have quite a bit that I can play with here. So I can play up to 5,000 there, and I got some in there already as well. 5558. Five, five, so this is what I do. Like I'll play very small positions, guys. Small, small positions. And, um, you know, there you go. There's six more getting executed. Some, you know, if I, some people. You know, if I want to stack up bids sometimes, like on my main accounts there, I might put in like, you know, 1500 or something, right? Just to scare the market on a small 24 hour volume. And I might stack it somewhere where another guy is just to scare them. For example, here at 348, right? So if I just did 34, I have no intention to buy, right? This is just to show you, right? So now I've got an order here and I'm stacking with this guy, right? See that? He's 1500 there. I also put up 1500 coins which basically implies to people that actually let's move it up to 496 right here so on my main account i'll put up really big amounts like huge amounts right just to show people that the price is not going to go any lower and that is what we call a leverage wall and when you when you use these leverage walls when you have enough capital um, it scares the market into thinking, oh, I should buy, I should buy, I should buy, I should buy. And that's how market manipulation can work. And I also do it for the other way where I will put a wall up like here, for example. Okay, I'll put up a wall up on this side to let people think that it will not go down. But the simultaneously, what I'll do is I'll put in short sell orders on this side. Okay, so people are buying, are buying, are buying, are buying, are buying up. But what they're actually buying, right, guys, is they're filling my short order. Okay. And then it fools them into thinking that there's a big bid on this side here that it's not going to go down. Now, to you guys, it might not seem like a lot on ETP, but trust me, that's a lot. You don't see a lot of people doing that with 1.5, even in small position to me, like five grand that I put up, but people can see it very visibly, right? They can see it, which means that, oh, there's a lot of people wanting to buy. So it'll drive up the price. Know what I mean? Cool. There you go. Now my entire position just um, got executed. I made twelve dollars, and then after that, after I fills up my short orders, what I will do simultaneously is I will remove my massive walls on this side that was driving up prices to fill up my short. Um, I've been doing it. I've honestly been doing it all day on ETP, right? Like on small small trades. Like look at look at how many trades I've made today already. That's just just today, November twelfth, right? That's uh, quite a bit of trades, guys. Just since noon here, that's how many trades and how much. I wouldn't really call it manipulation. I'd call it more so um, strategy. This is what strategy is at a different level, right? Or on a higher level. And then after they fill up my short order, what I will do is I will I will also put up like a large amount on the sell side, right? And then people are like, oh crap, what do I do? There's massive walls now up on the other side. And then they get scared and my short orders are already filled and I'll just keep driving the, like my friends and I, we'll, we'll, we'll keep driving the price down, right? We'll keep stacking up more and more and more and more sell orders. And then the people that were entered a long position, right? There, uh, we count on a lot of newer traders, just as an example, newer traders will be like, um, you know, they, they'll hold on to their coins until it goes really low, right? So as the market is being driven down with these leverage walls, right? Um, of course, we're going to profit when we close our short on the bottom, but the people that have been holding long, and usually the newer traders, they'll realize, oh crap, it's going low. So they will add into strength, and we count on those people 
to keep selling down with us to add into strength on the next waves. So anyways, I just want to give you guys a quick trade. So yeah, that's kind of it. So I keep about $5,000 of margin funding. That's all I need. I don't need anything more than 5K, guys. 5K is a perfect number for me. And I, I like to be very transparent about what I'm doing with you guys, okay? So now we're going to go back to ETP. And we're going to talk about this. So now that I've made my lunch money of $12 right in front of you guys, thank you very much for witnessing that and participating with me. Massive profits to be made today. But I already made my profit today, guys, from $325 all the way up to $380. So, yeah. I, I, I sold a lot. This one could have been me right here. This, this candle right there. Actually, I remember on the one-minute chart there. <laughs> yeah, this guy right here. That's when I sold this candle right here. I just did a mass market execution, right? What I did was I did a market execution right there like that. Huge dump that I did, right? And I instantly knew that there would be a slingshot. So as I closed my short orders, right? So what I did was I also put in buy orders right on the bottom right there, guys. I put in a buy order right there in the bottom as I was tanking it, which absolutely 100% filled because people followed the lead. And I use a slingshot strategy. The slingshot strategy basically assumes it's going to bounce right back up, right? And that's what the slingshot strategy really is. And they worked like wonders. And this happened in the span of like one or two minutes, right? And then I got my orders filled here at 367. I sold it again at 380 in less than five minutes of trading time. So I'm just trying to get get let you guys get inside of my head as well right just some of the small strategies that i use and these are fairly basic strategies that i use wait till we get into harmonic patterns guys i haven't even talked about harmonic patterns once yet i haven't even tweeted a harmonic pattern once yet once we get into harmonic patterns and just patterns in general it's going to blow your mind the amount of knowledge you guys are going to gain over time i promise you okay so notice that i chose the exact time to sell right Chose the exact perfect time to sell. <laughs> I made my $12. I'm happy. Made my lunch money every single time. You know, every single time I make a video, I get paid to make it. You believe it or not. I make, um, you know, I take like a 20 to $30 profit in between the trades I pause. So don't think that I'm, I'm um, it's, you know, don't, don't feel bad, guys, that I'm doing this on my own time. I trade in between very small trades just to make sure, that, you know, it covers the basics, right? Like my lunch and stuff or, or Luna's two six of tequila or whatever, you know? So yeah, <coughs> excuse me. So we're gonna get back to this now. We've now that we've covered a lot of things. Okay. So how is how is this calculated? Your risk to reward. The risk reward is calculated by taking your target price minus your entry price divided by your entry price minus your stop loss price. Okay. So this is the formula right there, and you're welcome to read it again. So the target price is right here, three dollars and sixty-seven cents. Put into there minus your entry price of 350 divided all of it divided by the difference between your entry price and your stop loss price so what we're going to take is the top line you know 3.67 minus 3.5 divided by the bottom line 3.5 minus 3.38638 and we get this number here. We get the 17066 divided by 0.11362, which is equal to 1.5 exactly. And this right here is known as 1.5 to 1 risk to reward ratio. That is how this is calculated, guys. So what this basically means, and if you guys think back of the casino example, is that every time you, if you enter this trade right there, this trade right here, okay, if you enter this trade right here <clears throat> and you use that casino example of 1.5, what this means is you have a chance to gain 4.88% of your money every single time. And you also have a chance to lose 3.25% of your money. So what this basically means is if you take your possible loss percentage, 3.25%, you have a chance to gain 1.5 times more which means you will win up to 4.88% of the time, okay? Now, we're going to do that basic math again, just for you guys to know, right? And then we also did that 10-day ratio again. So 10-day ratio, let's say you had a chance, let's play, let's just say we're going to use exact numbers so you guys know. And I'm going to do the math right here in front of you, okay? 
let's say out of 10, 10 trades now, trend trades with this exact same ratio, with the exact same chance to win, with exact same RR, with same position size, size of say $1,000, right? Uh, actually, we'll, we'll, we'll use um, a round number, 320 position size of $1,000, sure, $1,000, okay? And now, um, what else? So, which means that if you have a chance to win, to win 4.8% equals to $448, okay, $48.8 per win. Chance to lose 3.25% is equal to $32.50 per loss. Right? You guys following so far? We're using a $1,000 position size. Okay, $1,000 position size. And we are taking this specific chance to gain scenario. So if you entered a position right there, for example, that's what it would signify. Now, out of 10 games, or 10 trades rather, right? 10 trades, where we're assuming a 50-50 chance as well. And also always keep in mind that it's usually higher than 50% chance when you enter a trade because you look for indicators you look for indicators and you make sure that you time it very precisely when you enter, right? And once you get something called confluence from more indicators, then you will have a better gauge of how possibly successful it can be. And I have a lot of different spreadsheets, guys. I have so many different spreadsheets that I keep and I'm gonna share with you guys one of my favorite spreadsheets today, okay? It's a basically a risk to reward calculator and it'll also allow you to gauge how much profit you can make just by putting in a few simple numbers. So with this exact one right here, right? I have it. I'm gonna do it mathematically first by text, and then I'm gonna show you on a spreadsheet. So out of ten trades, win five, five win, five losses. Okay. So if you won five, uh, win five at forty-eight point eight each, that's equal to each is equal to. I gotta get my calculator. I can't do that in my head. Asian level mathematics has officially failed. Somebody pull out the Chinese gentleman from my pocket. 200, oh crap, he's not here. He's too busy playing the piano. Win, so now you lose five at 332.5 per, per loss, right? Each per loss. Now that is equal to 32.5 times five. That's equal to $162.50. 62.50, right? Is that right? Yes, 162.5, right? So that's a total. Total wins, or total profit from wins. And this one here is your total profit from losses. Okay, following? I hope so. And now what is your actual total profit? Actual total profit is equal to 244 minus 162.5 is equal to, I can't do the math in my head. Asian level mathematics has failed officially again. Impossible. How does Finicon fail? It's so impossible. It's now equal to 81.5. 81.5, okay? So if you guys took this risk to reward setup every single time, and I've also related it to many, many different, to the casino example as well. Well, would you guys agree with me that if you were playing $1,000 every single time, if you had a chance to win 4.88%, so it says right here 4.88%, and you have a chance to lose 4.25% there, your risk to reward ratio is 1.5, okay? 1.5, we've all defined it already. Would you guys agree with me that out of 10 trades, same position size, same chance to win, if you won $48.50 each for a total of $244 profit from wins, and you lost five each at $32.5 each per loss, which equals 162.5 total profit from losses, wouldn't you guys agree that the total profit is equal to $244 minus 162.5, which is equal to an actual profit of $81? Yeah, of course you would agree with me. And that's how I trade over time, guys. I will trade over time, and I will make 100% sure that I always do my risk to reward calculations, and they have to be on point. So there you guys have it. That is how you do the calculations, right? So I, I apologize. I know a lot of you guys know this math is really easy. This is not advanced mathematics, guys. This is 
this is honestly like high school mathematics, right? You just got to put in a little bit of the time to, to learn just the basic math. Um, you know, I studied math in university for three years, right? And trust me, this is really easy math, and it might be really foreign to a lot of people, but trust me, when you guys work with these formulas long enough, they'll become really easy. In fact, when I first started learning about risk to reward, I didn't really understand the concept as well either of winning over time. Not to say that some of you guys don't understand it, but just for the people that don't, okay? I didn't really understand it as well, right? De depending on how good or bad you are at math but I firmly believe that it's something that we should all learn over time because it's what keeps us profitable now entering a trade guys and hoping never works as I always say the best way to be successful as a trader is to constantly know your risk to, re to reward formulas uh, not your formulas but your, your risk to reward ratio and that is what keeps you profitable over time because I always mention we don't care about the small losses guys we just want to make sure we stay profitable over time so myself when I take a loss I just say to myself meh whatever it's just another loss and I look back to my massive spreadsheets and I'm like hey, I just won the past 13 trades I really don't feel that bad anymore <laughs> okay so um, this is priming for a breakout right now this is itching for a breakout right now what I love about ETP is because I have a 0% fee right because my my maker fee is 0% based on my volume you have to do quite a bit of volume to get to that because it's 0%, I can scalp literally one cent, guys. I can scalp two cents even, right? Normally, you can't really do stuff like that. But when you get your volume high, like, it's quite amazing. So I can scalp, for example, IOTA, you know? I can scalp Ripple as well, which is kind of an... Um, this is why I don't recommend people scalp because you guys might not have the same make, um, maker and taker fee, right? So you got to play with a, a different spread. So... If you guys see me tweet about uh, scalping, you know, take it with a grain of salt and always take into consideration your actual um, your your actual maker and taker fee as well. So now I'm going to show you guys. This is going to be a long video, guys. This is going to be a really amazing video. It really is. This is I'm going to share with you guys. I'm going to share with you guys something here. Okay. All right. So take a look at this. I'm going to explain to you guys my setup for here. Okay. So, and I also factored it into to the maximum maker and taker fee, just so you guys know. Let's say you guys bought ETP coin, right? You bought ETP right here at $3. I'm going to go through every single field, don't worry, at $3.50. Well, if you went to, I always have up or down, just so I can see it on both, up or down. What it means is if you went long and you factored in the maximum maker fee, which is, or taker fee, which is 0.2 times 2, you have to sell it at, at basically 0.4% more, right? So to break even based on all fees, you would have to sell it at $3, 3.514. And if you short it, it goes to the opposite, right? I just like to have it up and down for both. So these are the same, excuse me, I burped there. This was the same thing. 3.5, you need to sell it at 3.514 to break even. Now this field here is how many coins you're trading. So let's say you're trading, I don't know, 1,000 coins, okay? A thousand coins right there you put in your purchase price you're up in your downfield you do not touch that okay so now you put in your resistance your maximum resistance right where your resistance is basically the maximum point where you think it'll reach okay which is basically the top of this whoops the top of the green box right there okay so our target was three dollars and sixty seven zero six six so i will put three dollars and sixty seven zero six six in my resistance okay see that and then my target sell is we'll say something slightly lower than it say 365 right because you know that's just a, a target it's not 100 percent likely to get there we might want to shoot for something slightly lower and then now what we put in is our stop loss okay and our stop loss is 3.38638 right here okay so if you guys notice the risk to reward popped up right away if i increase my resistance to 75 then my risk also goes is a, also a, my, my risk to reward ratio is higher. If my my, my target was lower, 3.4, then, or sorry, 3.55, well, now my risk to reward is really low at 0.4. You don't want to do that, guys. You always want to take risk to reward setups of at least one and up. My scalping risk to reward positions that I take, they're very risky. They have lower than one risk, okay? One risk to reward ratio. That's why I don't really share them in terms of having a 
having a, a green box like this on Twitter, it's also instantaneous, the decisions that I actually make. So check this out here. We're just about to close higher than here. You guys see that? We ticked up three cents already. Do you guys see? So that's what I was talking about, guys. And now I'm, I'm going to short it when it finishes this correction. Remember, I was earlier it was at 3.6 and I was just talking about wanting to take profit because I want to finish this video. But I know I can read indicators, guys, like you would not believe. Like, yeah, I find I find trading, honestly, nothing but a glorified video game. And um, it's not even trading. It's not even trading. You don't ever want to focus on the money, guys. Trust me, okay? You do not want to focus on learning to trade to make money. What you want to do is you want to focus on trading and learning these skills to develop them. You have to develop these skills, okay, guys? I mean... If you, if people don't play in the NBA for the money, you know, it's because they love the sport, right? And they keep practicing or, or in any sport, they keep practicing and the money is a bonus, right? But the main goal, like they don't go into practice guys, like they don't, they don't scrimmage, right? They don't go to practice at the basketball court before games, et cetera, during the season. And with the, with the idea of thinking, Hey, I'm going to go in there to make money. I'm going to go to practice today because if I go to practice, I'm going to make money. No, it doesn't work like that at all, guys. At all, okay? What they, what they, the money, they go there to refine their skills and they understand in the back of their mind that the money is actually a bonus from everything going on, all right? So that's something that we have to firmly, firmly understand that everything that we do is to improve our skills as a trader. It is not to make money. So I'm just going to take a look at this right here. Give me a second. Okay, so yeah, I, I forgot where we were. I was actually gone for about 15 minutes there. I just got some company over. Um, yeah, so this stop loss right here, we'll just get back to where we were. I'll try to remember. 3.67066, right? So now we got the exact same thing in this spreadsheet that it shows. If we take a look at here, for example, This show, this right here, and I'll, I'll, I'll put this in my Google Drive so you guys can download it with a shareable link, okay? So just put in, once again, I'm going to go over it to make sure you guys understand it very thoroughly. Put in the amount of coins that you bought and the purchase price here, just like this example we've been using the whole time. Entry price of 350 right? Entry price of 350 Your target sell price, or first I'll put in your resistance, where, where there's major resistance, right? up there where you think the maximum target it'll reach will be around there. So this was with um, 3.67, whoops. Sorry, my numlock wasn't on there. You guys are going to get a lot of goodies today from me, like tons of amazing goodies. So 0.367 there. And your stop loss, that is the point where you guys are going to say no more today. No more, I am going to cut this loss every single time at this price pretty much, okay? It's, it's called... I want to get into stop losses in a different video, so I'm not going to get into it too much in this video. Stop loss is a fairly important topic as well, but to me, I don't have a hard stop number. A hard stop would basically be this. A hard stop is defined as something, if it hits this target, I will sell it no matter what. That is not me, guys. I don't do that. I don't do that, and I'm going to get to it. This is going to be a really long video because you guys are going to get a lot of goodies from it, okay? So this refers to your position size, okay? If you bought uh, 1,000 coins at 3.5, the, the yellow field is the only thing you guys touch. That's why it's highlighted, the yellow. You don't touch any other field, okay? Coin, your resistance, your stop loss, your target sell, your purchase price. Your up or your down, you don't touch. This tells you what is your, what is your position size. It just takes your coin amount multiplied by your purchase price, okay? That's it. Your risk to reward is 1.5 all right it's 1.5 there and your your um sorry this is the maximum you can lose so if you take your stop loss there right and this calculates it all right this is the maximum that you can lose which is also says right there 3.25 but the reason why this is 3.65 and this is 3.25 notice the difference of 0.4 is because this factors into account the maker fee of the maximum amount, which is 0.4. Okay, guys, that is why. So I'm taking 3.25 and I'm adding 0.4 to it as well because we have to factor in fees, all right? The fees is really important. 
and the target growth and the target growth right here right here okay guys the target growth this is what you would gain in percentage if you sold it at that price and your maximum growth is is how much you would actually make uh am i calculating this right sorry the, the maximum growth is the maximum you would win in percentage notice this is 4.88 but this one is 0.4 less okay this is 4.88 minus 0.4 because there's a 0.2 percent for the maker fee right or sorry for for the the taker fee each way so i'm factoring the maximum percentage for you guys in here all right so that's really important so this one once again is your maximum loss which accounts into fees this one here is your target growth which also counts to your fees for the target sell price that you are specifying so let's just give an example if you're curious hey if i sold at four dollars what would i make I would actually make 14% of my money. I would make $486, okay? And this one here is your maximum growth based on the resistance. This tells you your maximum loss amount. This tells you your maximum profit dollar, your maximum profit right here. Uh, sorry, your maximum profit if you sold it at this price. This column right here tells you your maximum loss if it actually hit your resistance, okay? Now, this is a pretty basic spreadsheet. You know what? I'm actually not going to give this one away. I'm not going to post it for you guys. I'm going to not do, I'm not going to do all the grunt work for you guys. I take that back entirely, guys. I am not going to share this spreadsheet because I think that everybody should put in some hard work as well. And you guys should probably develop your own spreadsheet as well. And this is a perfect example of how, you know, I don't know why. I just had like an aha moment there, right? Usually I'm doing a lot of the work, which I'm more than happy to, to do, and I'm very, very happy to do it. But in terms of spreadsheets, I'm definitely going to keep these to myself. So I retract what I said about sharing it earlier there. Sorry, I just had to go AFK there for a second. And now what we're going to talk about is averaging out your prices, okay? Okay. Now that you guys did, oh, there's also a formula that I keep as well for my short right here. For my short, so not only do I have it for going long, but I also have the exact same formula. And I've been building this for years now, guys. I've been building this spreadsheet for like a, pretty much two years. Uh, just this specific one, just to make sure it caters specifically to me. And the risk to reward is bang on, right? And um, and mine is actually zero, so I would be removing the 0.004 in there. And now I want to talk about something called averaging out our price, and I want to give you guys one example only. Okay, so let's just say, let's just use right here as an example. We're gonna clear everything on the screen. Okay, let's just say, in these five minutes, you guys screwed up. Okay. Let's say you bought somewhere here, right there. Three, we'll, we'll make it a round number, 3.20. Because it bounced right here and you guys thought, okay, it's gonna bounce. And we're gonna make sure you guys can see that here as well. Two zero, Let's show the price. So that's $3.20, this line right here, okay? You guys see that? There you go. That's three dollars and twenty cents, right? Right here. Three point two. Now, you guys might be waiting a really long time. You might be waiting a really long time if you were going long for it to even get back to this price, right? And I know what a lot of you traders do. What you guys do is you guys will hold on to it for as long as you can until it bounces back. That is the typical mentality of ninety-five percent of all traders because stop losses are not learned yet or you guys aren't familiar with how to manage your risk. Now I'm going to give you guys a very basic example of how to ladder your buys and what I would recommend to do to, as a simple and basic method of risk management and reducing your risk in general. Now I'm no financial advisor but this is what I would do okay just as a very clear example. So if I thought that this was the bottom because it went high okay right it looks like it double bottomed there a little bit, but it went way lower if we notice, okay? So let's say we bought a thousand coins here. We bought 1,000 coins. 1,000 coins at $3.20, which is equal to $3,200, right? 
which is equal to $3,200. Now, that right there, guys, is a mistake, right? So you'll have, you're going to have to be waiting a pretty long time. Most, some people might even panic, right? They might even panic. Actually, I'm not going to use 3,200. I'm going to use a better example so people can relate to it. I'm going to use $320, okay? Uh, and 100 coins. So now you guys have spent $320, 100 coins at $3.20 each. You might be waiting a long time for it to get back to here. In fact, you might not even know if it's going to get back to there. So you're taking a major, major risk, okay, guys? Because you're taking that major risk, this is what I usually do. I will assume that's going to go a little bit lower, okay? And when it gets to the bottom there, right? When I see spikes in volume, I'll put limit orders up. And when I put my limit orders up, just for example, I put one right here. And my order actually gets filled because someone dumps to it. Now, what's this one at? Three, we'll just make this 3075. Actually, we'll make it three, 310 just to make it easy right here. Actually, what we'll do is we'll make it 3075, okay? Yeah, 3075. And now, what we're going to do is we're going to buy more. We're going to buy more at $3 right there. So let's say I bought a little bit more and I bought, say, 200 more coins, right? Let's say I bought 200 coins more at $3.075. What is that equal to? 600. I can't do the math in my head. 615. 615. Not bad. Asian level mathematics does not ever fail. So it's 615. Okay, guys. Right? So you bought 100 at 320. And now you bought another 200. You bought another 200 at 615. Well, let's do the basic math. Okay? Let's do the basic math here. And these are calculations that I really recommend that everybody learn. You've now bought a total of 300 coins, right? You bought 100 coins at $3.20, and then you bought 200 coins at $3.075, right? Make sense so far? This, I'm just basically writing what, what I wrote above, three, uh, 615. So that's now 300 coins total at $3.20 plus 615. So that's basically 300 coins total at um, $935, right? That's how much you've spent. So now what we want to find out is this. What is the average price? What is the average price? The average price is equal to $935 divided by 300, right? And what does that work out to? Let's do the math. 3935 divided by 300. So it's now 31167. Three, now the average price is equal to three one 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 six seven, right? That's based on just the math that I did in front of you guys. Three one one six seven. Yep, three one one six seven. It's rounded up. So now instead of holding hundred and twenty coins, where their base price is three dollars and twenty cents, now your base price is actually uh, is actually because you bought more on the bottom, it averages out your price to three dollars. And 11 cents, right? We'll just round it up to 312 just to make it easy, right? So now, before you'd have to sell it at this line to break even, but now you only need to sell it because you think it's gonna, you, you're basically assuming that it's not gonna go down much lower, okay? This is a strong thing that I need to emphasize. You are assuming that it's not gonna go down lower because in this particular situation, the RSI was already pretty low, right? And now you see it dip down really low. So the chances of it getting even lower, not likely at all, guys. Not likely at all that's going to go lower. So because it was already low and you made a mistake and you bought it at 3.2 and it went even lower, now you're going to assume, oh, the five-minute R size is way too low. It can't possibly go that much lower. So you're basically going to triple up on the amount of coins you have. You buy more with the underlying assumption that it's going to bounce, okay? And now you only need to sell it at three dollars and twelve cents to break even, right? Three one one six, three one one. We'll just say three twelve, sure, right? So now you only need to sell it right here on this baseline coordinates, right here, 
312. That's it, guys. So now you only need to sell it to 312 to break even. Before, you needed to sell it way up to there to eat, break even, but you're taking advantage of the fact that it's very, very much so at the bottom already, right? So you add up more, you add more. This is this is a more basic, I guess, risk management technique, but at the same time, it's also risky as well, right? There's always risk on top of your risk, but because the R size is really low, to me, it reduces my risk in general, right? So before, guys, this is what, what you were looking at, okay? Before, if you were in a long position, and let's say you were targeting up here, and your stop loss was like somewhere ridiculous, right? Somewhere somewhere like really low. We'll just assume a one-to-one -one ratio like this, okay? One-to-one -one ratio there. It's gonna be a really long time, right? Really, really long time. And the risk of here is one, right? Let's keep this at the exact same right there all of a sudden we bought more lower okay guys we bought more lower and our average price is actually 312 now uh, we, tar we target the same price up there we keep our stop loss pretty much uh down there oh now guys your loss is right below those points your targets the same well your risk to reward just changed from 1.0 to 2.98 which is a better risk to reward to you guys, 1.0 or 2.98? Well, obviously 2.98, right? And that's what it does when you are laddering your buys like this on dips, right? It averages out your price when you get closer to the bottom. It reduces your risk as well. When I say reduces your risk, what I mean is it changes your risk to reward ratio from 1.0 to 2.98. And that's a very important concept to understand, okay? Where we get to average out our buys. And in my spreadsheet that I carry, just as an example, right? And this is a very basic one right here. So if I bought a price of 3.2, it does this spreadsheet does all of it, guys. It did it for you already. So, which you guys should absolutely create, okay, guys? Like I mentioned, I'm not gonna share this spreadsheet. I don't want to be doing all the grunt work and the easy stuff for you guys. You guys gotta make sure you put in hard work as well, okay? So if I bought two or a hundred at 3.2. That's $320, right? Now, if I added more, like 200 coins at, or sorry, um, at 3.075, I bought it at, and I, boom, it automatically calculates it all for me. And this is my average, that's awesome. If I bought, say, more on the bottom, where it dipped a little bit more, right? I bought $3 now, and I bought, say, 400 everything for me tells me the total amount that I've spent the total that I actually have the total amount I've spent and it takes all for me. so these very simple spreadsheets that I have so this is awesome to create these yourselves as well you guys want to it just to look at some of the field and do a little bit of the calculation so I'll go over with you guys in this video it was a very long but I thought it was more a basic risk management. Keep in mind, this is very basic risk management. It's a whole different level. We are going to get there one day, but before we get there, we've got to understand the basics first. Wouldn't you guys agree with me? Basics first, advanced stuff later, okay? So if you guys enjoyed this video, you guys know what to do. Share it, like it, subscribe, follow me on YouTube and Twitter. And if you guys especially love this video, you guys are welcome to send Luna, my awesome dog there, a tip. It all goes towards her vodka and her tequila fund. And if you guys do tip me as well, if you love the video, it's my spreadsheet. that, you guys are getting my spreadsheet. So have yourself a fantastic day. And I'll upload this on the Steam It community as well if you guys and all those that got into this ETP trade this morning, congratulations. Money, we just love it. Okay, I'm going to show you guys something for the people that didn't get in. That is you guys right there. This is a big fence, right? This is all of us hanging out. That's probably me, I'm guessing, since I made the call. Um, and I'm surrounded by beautiful golden rich. I'm not saying you guys are dogs, okay? I'm not saying you guys are dogs, but I'm just, it's just a funny photo, you know? That's the bulldog. That's the golden retriever. We're, we're all hanging out in the pool, guys. That's you right there. Okay, that's you that didn't get in on the trade. I'm sorry. 
And I just want to tell you guys about the trade that we all got in on, which was beautiful, right, guys? Beautiful trade right here. I called it before anything even happened, guys. Amazing, right? Called it right there. Got all my risk to reward setups that I suggested to enter be below 325. Surely not today. We hit 383, guys. That's a 17% gain in less than 24 hours. If you guys had a $10,000 position, you guys would have made $1,700 just from simply following me. So other than that, guys, you have yourselves a phenomenal day. And I really appreciate all the love and the support once again. And take care of yourselves. And make sure you guys remember my poem or my rap at the beginning of the video. Okay, guys? Every time you guys want to be cautious, make sure you, abs you exercise abstinence. Otherwise, you'll regret it and we'll have to call the ambulance. Okay? Have a great day, guys. Bye now.